Hi, in this session, we're going to be covering the mapping of APQC version 7.2.1 to CSDM version 3. APQC is really a benchmarking and process management organization. They define those processes and they collect metrics and provide sort of uh, your, your benchmarking information, how you rank against other companies in your industry or for certain process areas. And for more information, go to apqc.org. So some of the common areas and similarities and differences between CSDM and APQC. CSDM was really a framework that we created here to help understand what common data we used across our products and digital products and services throughout their entire life cycles here at ServiceNow. APQC had focused really on that Six Sigma area where you try to improve processes based on the metrics, uh, financial performance metrics, um, driven based on Six Sigma and imp improvement of those processes. CSDM use is really ServiceNow platform specific. It's a ServiceNow data model that we created to help organize and communicate between products. APQC, however, is really used by large enterprises from the business point of view to understand their metrics processes in the business from HR, financial management, uh, manufacturing, it doesn't really matter. And they have different industry versions of APQC as well. So you can do a collection on specific things like in the banking industry, there's things that happen that don't necessarily occur in other industries. The origins of CSDM, it's relatively new. We created it in 2018 as a collaboration between different product units so that we can all be on the same page and interact through that data. APQC was originally part of the IBM organization and they spun it out in the 1992 timeframe. It was spun out because it wasn't core to the IBM business, uh, although it was usually used in terms of understanding where the opportunities to automate things, the things that IBM typically does. And, and it's kind of grown as a independent organization a lot of organizations do refer or bring that information in when they're doing an organization level assessment, basically. So APQC classification framework is probably one of the most common areas of overlap. And this is how we organize the metrics and the processes that are in the, the environment. And you can see the operating processes along the top. These are what I would say your main value stream. This is where you basically could do your product uh, development vision and strategy, you develop your and manage your products and services, of course, market and sell them, deliver them, and then, uh, or, and or services. So what APQC uh, in some of the later version here separated out fit products and service delivery because they can be different or coupled and then manage customer service. So that's the ongoing support of your products in the market. And then everything below that is really the supporting processes. And you can see here that IT is one of the supporting processes. So IT could all help automate the main ones and help automate other supporting processes, which is really common. So uh, this is something to keep in mind. And uh, you can see other areas, uh, risk and compliance, for example. And uh, one interesting area that we're going to get into in a little bit more is this develop and manage business capabilities. I see this as a way to look at the entire APQC classification of processes and see where you need to make investments. So there's a nice recursion there. That's, uh, that's a point of one of the more recent additions to APQC. And when you look at these, uh, these areas, you can see that there's a number and what APQC does is breaks these process classifications down by level. And at the lowest level, it's task. And that's a pretty granular level of activity if you think about it. And uh, that's where a lot of change might happen. But typically we don't see too much change happening at that level one and level two where we have category and group. Uh, but process down, we, we would see typically a lot more change. And, and most organizations would probably manage effectively at the first two levels. And, now, and then of course those last three levels uh, become quite granular. Uh, to see what this looks like in the raw data, Here's a, just a little excerpt. You can download the spreadsheets, which have the ID. You can see the ID follows this thing and you've got the high level IT, for example, which corresponds to, uh, in this case, number eight here. And then you have that breakdown to the lower levels, understand business requirements for IT capabilities. There, there you go. So this is where we need to understand, you know, what IT needs to do in order to um, support what the business is doing maybe up here and the core operating processes.
So how I APQC maps to the CSDM framework is as follows. So a lot of times you can see um, where the IT basically managing IT processes are supported by the whole framework. So think about the fact that we're doing our design, managing, technical, business consume, consumption. All of that is part of what IT does. And so there's a loosely coupled mapping there. Now, the more interesting area, I think, is uh, here, where we have developing, managing business capabilities that ties directly down into the business capability hierarchy that we have in design here. So that's actually a nice tie-in. And there's another couple of really interesting use cases, too, and that's really where we use the APQC in designing business capabilities. So there's a, a common need for understanding those capabilities and how those hierarchies break down, and APQC is oftentimes a good place to start in defining your own capabilities. Uh, because they have industry specific versions of APQC, you can download one that's close to your industry or in your industry and, and just massage it from there. The other interesting use case for APQC is in defining your business services and service portfolio. As you automate more of your processes, those basically are in IT and those are reflecting on the business services and the APQC process classification framework tends to now reflect the service portfolio structure. So there's no mistake there that there's a correlation between using it for the capability structure as well as service portfolios. We often see the correlation between the business capability structure and service portfolio structure being very very similar. Thank you very much for this quick session on how APQC is used in conjunction with CSDM. Hopefully this has been helpful.